Hey, 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 all you R Space fans. Today we got one story, and it's a guy that has a little bit of a dilemma. So let's see if we can listen to a story and help him out down below in the comments. It goes with the title, Caught Wife Cheating, Now What About Her Kids? I, male 52, lost my first wife 10 years ago. At the time, two daughters, now 21 and 24. Life went on after about three years. I met current wife, 38, met innocently enough, basically kept bumping into her at various places around town. Never really talked, sometimes made eye contact. We would point at each other at a distance and just smile. Then one day, getting my car worked on, she walked into the waiting room while hers was worked on also. So we finally had a long conversation. We went across the street to get real coffee as service centers was bad. We talked about an hour, then I was paged mine was done. I asked if she would like to do lunch one day to continue talking. We exchanged numbers and a day to meet up. We dated for two years, then married. She has two boys now, 10 and 14. They moved into my house, been living with her parents for three years. My girls loved her, not as a stepmom, but as a big sister. Although having another adult in the house with two teenage girls was a blessing. Life is grand. I love those boys as if they were my own. I want to adopt them when they can make a decision on their own. The little one calls me dad. The oldest, well, it was awkward. I told him to call me what he felt comfortable, my first name. The girls called her by her name. Wife is stay at home mom. We decided until kids were adjusted. Now she doesn't want to work, but does volunteer at school lunch and other things. Daughter one goes off to college, is now graduated. The younger daughter graduated this past morning. We are moving the rest of her things this weekend. I was told her ex abandoned them about the time baby number two came along and has been no contact since. Her mom is very nice, but holds me at arm's length. He is an alpha dog. I don't think he wanted anyone else taking care of his daughter, only child, and grandkids. He would berate me because I was too old, not much younger than him. This would be any time I was around them. I am non-confrontational, so I told wife I would just stay away from them. I did encourage her to continue the relationship as they only live a couple blocks away. February this year, her ex reappears, wants to be in their lives. He is sketchy at best. I cannot refuse this. He starts coming around often. I set a boundary that he comes on weekends so as not to interfere with school and we can control his visitation somewhat. He comes most weekends, but really spends time alone with the kids as we try to give him space. I ask wife if he made any child support payments while he was gone. No. I suggest to her to talk to him about getting caught up of whatever he owes and to ask about signing over rights so I could adopt. She said she would talk to him. First part of March, our sex life starts to dive. You know where this is going, right? But I am oblivious. I mentioned to the wife, she has the usual excuses. I notice little things around the house are different. My favorite snacks are gone, missing a few beers, not a big drinker, just one every now and then. But the big one was I could smell what I thought was weed. I asked my wife if she was smoking. As we don't, she hasn't. I thought the now 14 year old was. Suggested we talk with him. She says she would handle it. About two weeks ago, 14 year old asked me if I love mom. I said yes, thinking he has a girlfriend. Time for a talk, right? He says that we always sat together and were touching each other some way or another. This made him feel good. He asked if mom loved his dad. I responded that sure, on some level she does. Why asking? He replies that they are always looking at each other, talking and touching, and he is over all the time. I asked what he meant by all the time. Almost every day when they get home from school, he is there, then leaves. That weekend, I'm in the living room, and he is over for visitation. He comes in and sits down across from me with a beer. I look up from my reading and tell him to help himself to a beer. He says nothing. I ask, why isn't he with the kids? I could hear laughing coming from the family room. He said he might go in a little bit. I tell him I will not drink in front of the kids. I wait until after they enter bed. He says nothing. He then states, you know, I'm only here for her. What does that mean? You're talking about my wife. He says technically not divorced. He never signed papers. So she is his wife. I know a judge signed off on divorce because he could not be found. That's why it took longer to divorce. I finally ask about the child support since I never heard back. He just looked at me and said that he was caught up, paid her 15,000 in cash. What the F? 
I asked then if she talked to him about giving up rights. Never asked. He asked what it would be worth to me. I said, you've got to be kidding. You would sell your kids? Before he could answer, I told him to leave. The next day, this past Sunday, the kids were at grandma and grandpa's with wife. I bought and installed a camera. I put it on top of the TV, very small. It has a view of the front door and living room. Motion activated. Nothing unusual until Monday about 10 a.m. I get an alert on the phone when the camera activates. So I'm at work, I get a notice. Figure it's the wife cleaning up. I look anyways. He comes back. She lets him in. They kiss long. He starts grabbing at her and she playfully pushes away. They are laughing, no sound. He sits on the couch. She brings him a beer and snacks. 10 a.m. She disappears. She is back a few minutes later. Clothes changed. She is going to school for lunch. They are talking. More grabbing, more pushing away, laughing. A few minutes later, she is up getting ready to leave. He gets up, grabs her again, making some gestures, then poses like he is praying hands together. They sit down again, then she goes down on him. She finishes up, goes out of range, comes back, says something, then leaves. He then watches TV. Then he takes a nap. Screen eventually goes blank. A little after 1 p.m., another alert. She is home. They talk. They both leave the room. I know they are headed to the bedroom. I race home and find them. They never heard me coming. There is the hysterics you would expect. He slithers out. I tell her she has to go. She pleads it was a one-time mistake. He had just got there. She was lonely because we weren't having sex, etc. I called BS. I asked how often he came over. Just the weekends. This was an anomaly. I showed the video of him napping. She said he was tired and asked. Then I showed her the BJ. She had nothing to say. I told her to pack her bags. She is out. I left and called her dad to take them in. We were having issues. He, of course, takes alpha position, telling me how I would screw this up, yada yada. I couldn't get a word in. Finally, I stopped him, asked again, and he said yes, then started on me again. I had enough. I said I would send him something. I sent the video edited down to the BJ. I told him to view and call me back if I was wrong. Never heard back. Talked to the lawyer Thursday. He helped with a state plan after first wife. Referred me to a partner who does family law. We'll meet Tuesday. Divorce will happen. He felt, but did not know for sure, that I would be on the hook for support for kids. No alimony since she broke our prenup. I made it up before marriage in addition to a state plan to protect my girls. I don't care about the support. Glad to do it. It's the boys. So my question or advice needed, has anyone else been through divorce and was able to see their ex's kids even if they're not yours? How did that go? The 14-year-old is partially vulnerable as he will be in high school next year. Formative years. I don't want to see him go down the tube and turn out like dad. And here's an update. This has been a busy week. Daughter's graduation over last weekend, moving her back, kids sports starting, meeting with lawyer, and sit down with the wife. I will try to keep it short. I have written this now three times because of length. I keep cutting it back. Met with the lawyer on Tuesday. We discussed what I wanted to do. I told him how I wanted to be in the boy's life. If that means remaining married, then so be it. I still have love for the wife, but no longer trust. He advised that in his experience, it would be wrong to continue the marriage as it would be a charade of one. Overall, a crappy marriage the boys would suffer. The prenup was violated. That will hold. Wife is not entitled to any support. He suggests that we work together to come up with a visitation plan that works for both. Child support will be up to me, but again, anything we work out will be looked on favorably by the court. He added that there have been cases where judges have ruled that a step-parent that has been in the child's life for a long time, where they have supported them, should pay child support. He didn't think the judges in our local courts have ruled that way, but they may at some time. Once she gets a lawyer, everything will be tougher. Get it worked out before then. He tells me in their weekly partners meeting, they go over new and upcoming cases. My original attorney only did elder law and estate planning. My new attorney does family law. The others do criminal and liability. A few hours after the meeting, criminal attorney, CA, comes into his office and told him the $15,000 in back child support just didn't sound right. The amount is pretty close to what the ex should have paid. His thought, how does a middle class person get his hands on that much cash? The CA made a call to a contact in the prosecutor's office in the county. It turns out the ex never abandoned wife and kids. 
He was in jail on drug charges. He was tied to a federal case. He was granted early release three years ago when the feds were releasing nonviolent prisoners to ease overcrowding. I don't know if they are interested in him now, but the criminal attorney seems to think he went back to his old profession. They really are divorced. We checked again. So Thursday comes around for us to meet. Wife and father-in-law come over to the house. It was very uncomfortable. Up until Tuesday meeting, I was still on the fence on what to do. I started off with saying I was going to record the meeting so there would be no misinterpretation of what transpired. They both agreed. I asked if she had consulted an attorney. She had not. I advised her to get one because there will be a divorce. That statement took the air out of the room. Wife asked if we could speak alone for a couple minutes before we continue. I agreed. She asked father-in-law to give us space. She started to apologize. I cut her off. I did not want excuses. I told her that she violated my trust by not only cheating, but lying to me. She asked how. I told her I know a lot more than she thinks. I knew she was just going to lie more. So I asked about the $15,000, why she never told me. She thought for a second. She never had that much money at one time and just kept it to herself. She still had the cash. I asked if she questioned where it came from. X knew he owed it to her and the kids, and when he got enough, that's why he showed up. So right away, she is lying. I told her I knew the deep, dark family secret. X was in jail. I asked where he had been for the last three years since his release. Had she met up with him? She was shocked I knew, but the look on her face that he was out for three years told me she did not know. He contacted her at the end of January. We discussed the fact that X wanted to sell me the boys for his vacating parental rights. She claims not to know this. I asked how long the sex been going on. She said the one time. I called BS. I told her I have the camera set up for a while. I showed her a clip where she actually dusted the TV and never noticed the camera on top. It wasn't big, but it was very obvious. Note, I only had the camera a few days, but what the hell, I just went with it. She thought it was part of a video game system. She then admitted it started in March, two full months. So she had told me another lie. At this point, we called father-in-law back in. I was done with the lies. We then get into what I want, the boys. At this point, we are recording. They both object, but eventually we come to the agreement that the boys can come over whenever, but stay with her. I would stay in the lives and provide what I feel is appropriate. I expect her to return to work, not to expect me to support her. I reminded her of the prenup and that she violated it. I said she cannot work the boys to ask for things because they will be honest with me when I ask if they were put up to getting something from me. I did say that I knew eventually she would have another man in her life, considering her age and that I would not cause any issues once I felt he had the best interests of the boys. By then, they could be beyond the confusion stage and could decide how they will react to another stepdad. One last thing, Redditors. Wife and I both are avid followers of different subs. We spent many evenings side by side reading our favorite and sharing with each other. She has read my post, figured out by my descriptions that it was me. She saw your reactions. While I wished I could have used most of your replies, she read them all and commented how you savaged her. Thank you. Well, that was a fun story, wasn't it? Let's see what the other Redditors thought. Then, throw your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. We love to read them. First up, Frog McNasty said, She stated you savaged her. Nah, she savaged herself. She threw away a good man so she could have some BS fling with a guy who tried to sell his kids. It doesn't get much more trashy and effed up than that. I know you'll do right by the kids. It's just a shame that she failed so spectacularly as a wife and mother. You're going to do just fine. You're a catch. And you're going to get back on your feet in no time. P.S. For the ex, you failed your family in a way that cannot be described. You, without a doubt, hurt the most positive thing in your children's lives for someone who was willing to sell them. You needlessly hurt someone who has shown you nothing but love and loved your children better than their bio dad ever would or could. You should be ashamed of yourself. You failed your children. Not Rick Deckard 1982 chimed in with, Ever hear the tale of the scorpion and the frog? The scorpion asks a frog to carry it across a river. The frog hesitates, afraid of being stung by the scorpion, but the scorpion argues that if he did that, they would both drown. The frog considers this argument sensible and agrees to transport the scorpion. The scorpion climbs onto the frog's back and the frog begins to swim, but midway across the river, the scorpion stings the frog, dooming them both. The dying frog asks the scorpion why it stung the frog, to which the scorpion replies, I couldn't help it, it's in my nature. Some people, especially those that cheat, just can't help it, even if they intend not to. It's their nature. 
The key is just to get them the hell out of your life once you discover their nature. Phoenix the Gene wanted to add, This is so accurate. I wish I could upvote more than once. I've been saying this across lots of comments, posts, etc. Cheating is one of those personality traits that's like being a morning person or liking coffee. Either you do or don't have it. There's no in between. Either you can be monogamous or you can't. If you can't be monogamous, tell people that up front so they know what you're getting themselves into. Unfortunately, it rarely pans out that way. Not Rick Deckard 1982 came back again with, the problem is that they want the benefits that come with pretending to be monogamous without actually being monogamous. And we've got a little dialogue going because Phoenix the Gene came back with, I know, my ex of 10 years was obsessed with single moms. He cheated on me the entire relationship with them. I found out about cheating at years 2, 4, 6, 6, 8, and 9. The ninth time, I was done. I sat him down and told him he could text, see, screw whoever he wanted. I was out. I put it in writing too, so he couldn't deny it. Updated my social media immediately, and less than six hours later, was sexting another guy from his living room. He began to lose it. This all happened over the course of Thursday and Friday, so I had the weekend. I invite the guy over and bang his daylights out, in the adjacent room, while my ex was in his room playing Call of Duty and day drinking. When we went out and stayed out all weekend long, came back Tuesday, my ex begged, pleaded, apologized, called, texted, did all kinds of crap. Gifts, money, jewelry, nope, I was out. He even enrolled in therapy to be a better man. It was too little, too late. Funny how he can dish out the cheating crap, but broke down like a dry humped girly part for me actually being single and sleeping with someone else. It still, to this day, ranks as one of the best moments I've ever had. My only regret was not sending that B-words cheating activity, photos, and text sex to her boyfriend at the time. I dated this guy, Rebound, for two years. I don't know which story is more savage, the comment or the original one. Let us know down in the comments. And until then, good luck and stay safe out there.